All right. So I'm going to try to keep this brief so we can have more back and forth and not guess what you want to know. But uh, I recently graduated from the department, and I decided to yeah, thank you. <laughs> I decided to write my dissertation with Markdown, our Markdown, um, and I'll tell you a little story of how I got there. But basically, the motivation for me was this reproducibility that comes with the, the open data and the, the tools that are increasingly available. And also the ability to integrate the data analysis with the report writing. Everything was in one place for me, which was really useful. Uh, and also, uh, I think the, another important motivation is that uh, it was plain text writing. You really interact with the content more and, and not worry so much about formatting, at least when it comes down to the science writing. Um, so uh, I think at least on the back end, that's true. When I got closer to having the final product at the end of uh, when I needed to have the report in, a dissertation in, it was really useful to be able to just change content that I needed to and not worry about formatting. Uh, on the front end, I had to do some formatting, which I'll share with you today. Um, but the toolkit that I ended up needing was a reference manager that could export .bib files, .bib text files. I used Paperpile, but I know Zotero, Mendeley, and lots of other reference managers can easily export .bib, bib files. You also have to pick a citation style. We all have to do that in whatever report we're writing. But there's the, uh, these files called CSL files that you can download. There's a GitHub repo of, I think, over 8,000 of them that you can select whatever journal you might be submitting a paper to. Or if you like, I like the uh, uh, Council for Science Editors style. That's the language I used. Um, and then also you need, of course, RStudio with the two packages, Knitter and Bookdown, uh, were the two. Before I go any further, if you want, uh, I, because I couldn't quite get it on GitHub, if you want to copy that link down, you can uh, copy that link. You can actually download all the files I'll be showing today. So if you want to work with a dummy dissertation, it's available to you. The uh, disclaimer is I used lorem ipsum, the, the Latin jargon. It makes no sense, but there are some signposts, and you can kind of see how everything comes together, hopefully. So uh, the motivation for me was actually... Uh, First of all, meeting people like Brian and learning about the tools that were available in this area, but also seeing another student who pulled this off uh, in Australia. There's a, a woman named Rose. She has a website, a blog called Rosanna's Research. Really good resource if you're thinking about doing this. She walks through step by step how she did it, and instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, I'd, I'd just suggest that you you visit her website and see what her process was. Because I definitely borrowed from her strategy, and then. Uh, the book down package in R basically did what she was describing. So I meshed her approach with the book down tools. But um, as I said before, the toolkits you'll need is a, is a reference manager that can export BibText files. Um, if you're not familiar, BibText is, I think, a plain text tool that came with LaTeX. Uh, for people in the, the math and science heavy world, they've uh, used LaTeX to produce professional PDF documents in the past. but. These reference managers should work well for you. You can export that file. And then, as I said before, you have to use what's called a citation style language, which is an XML-based language for formatting citations and bibliography. A um, couple of references for you there if you want to dig in further. But basically, the idea is that reference managers need descriptions of these citation styles so they can handle uh, the references as they're stored in your database. And as I said, GitHub has those files available for download. Uh, and then the, the two packages are here available as links for you, too. But I, one thing to know, if you've worked with Markdown already, at the top, there's something called the YAML header. I think of that as uh, if you're in Word, you kind of have the drop-down toolbars. You can, you can choose all your formats. The YAML header is the place where you can go and pre-specify some of the formatting you want your document to have. So that'll be a really useful tool for you if you, uh, if you choose to use this. So a couple quick references before I actually dive in and just do a live example with you. Um, Stack Overflow, Dr. Google. I probably spent a lot of time on those two, uh, those two resources. But the R Markdown and R Studio resources are really good. Uh, Yi Hui Xie is a giant uh, in this in this area. He's he wrote the Knitter package and he also wrote the Book Down package. So he's a really good resource and writes a lot about uh, the tools and how he uses them to produce professional reports. He published his book down book. Uh, he published it as a book through the book down package. Um, LaTeX, I have to remind myself it's not LaTeX, but uh, I embarrass myself more than a few times calling it LaTeX, but apparently it's LaTeX in the biz. Managing, management reference software that you can uh, get BibTeX files from. 
CSLs, and also uh, I mentioned Rosanna's research, but there's also uh, another resource there for you where you can get an R Markdown template. And there are people now who are actually submitting to journals using this approach. I haven't quite figured that one out yet, but I think it's, it's definitely in the future. So that's the end of my mini talk, but I'd like to just walk you through what I did. Uh, can everybody see this window okay? All right. So basically what I did, if you see these numbers 1 through 10, they're basically chapters in the dissertation. I separated the different units uh, and, and wrote individually in those for the, the document. So I'll, I'll open the, the, the title page for you. You can see pretty simple. Here's the YAML header up here. You specify what kind of output you want. You use, this is actually LaTeX language, this orange. Um, but you can specify some of these settings. And if you hit knit, you'll get your PDF. That looks like what we're required to submit to the university. Um, and so you string a series of these documents together, basically. So I have the title page. Copyright page is pretty boring. Peter Parker. Sorry, I was inspired by my brother who likes Spider-Man when I tried to come up with something. And then an abstract. So yeah, I mean, we've seen all this before, but um, you can see chapter one is my lit review. A few more things specified in the YAML header there, but it takes less than 10 seconds to produce the PDF. Uh, it spits out a table of contents and all my sections. But you can see there's no tables or figures, right? So in chapter two, I had some of those, and I'll run the script for you right now to see if it works. But you can see down here in the console area, uh, it's giving you a little readout on how far it is in progress. Yeah, is it too hard to see? Oh, shoot, sorry. I like working with the blue background, but let's see. Maybe with lighting we could help. Does that work? Okay. So it's 95%. So here's chapter chapter 2. Uh, and you can see all the contents there. And then uh, you can put appendices, your figures. You can link to your figures. You know, it'll look like the normal output you get from Word. But what's nice is everything's in one place. If you look at the... Um, the actual script, you can see here's the YAML header, put your title, you know, date, you can specify some of the formatting choices. Important thing here is you indicate the bibliography, the, the bib file that you export from your reference manager, uh, your CSL language, but this is just setting the global options for Knitter. This is the packages, those are some of the functions I wrote to help make the graphs look pretty. Um, but yeah, you can see all the script. I, I like to, to put sort of my functions and data cleaning at the top and then the text of the chapter in the middle and at the end is where you can actually produce your figures. But here's the actual simple text. It's, it's nice to just interact, not worry about the formatting. You can write all your paragraphs there. But you can see some of these uh, tags basically you create for a different figure. So this is a reference on how to say, you know, figure here with the backslash and uh, the at sign with the reference, your figure, and that's this is the name of the figure that I indicated in my chunk. If you're familiar with how the, the R Markdown chunks work. So at the end, of, I'll show you at the end of the script, you can see this above sampling figure is actually all the code is there. But you can have appendices. Everything's all in one place, so this whole chapter. But here's, uh, here's a table. That, here's that tag that I showed you before. Basically, you come up with your own conventions, but yeah, it was once I, I figured out a system that worked for me. Uh, it was pretty straightforward, I, and I I thought it was a journey, but I think it's now that there's a template available for people. I, hopefully, the bar is lower in terms of the formatting, um, what the school requires. But I can show you uh, as I open for questions instead of a, instead of walking through all of these because chapters three, four, and five look just like chapter two. I want to show you what the whole thing looks like when I run it. So if I go back to the parent folder, so what I've been showing you is what I think would be called child 
child files, basically, RMDs that are their individual chapters, but you have to string them all together in one big document. And that's what this dissertation.parent PDF file does. So if I open that and then I knit it, it's going to take about a minute, but you can watch it basically run through all of those child markdown folders or files, sorry. Um, it'll let you know if there's an error, obviously, there, but it'll produce a PDF, uh, the whole document at the end. Good question. Why not just use Word? That's a good question. <laughs> so uh, for me, like I said before, the simple text was, was really nice. I didn't have to worry about uh, how the figures were interacting with the text on the actual document. As I was updating the text, uh, that, was, that was one benefit for me. And the other thing was really what was valuable for me was have everything in one place. You know, if you think a dissertation might have 50 tables and figures, and if you wanted to copy and paste your figures from, from R or whatever you're making your figures, bring that over to Word is pretty, I don't know, that gets tedious in my opinion. So having all the figures the way you want them in the same place that you have all your text is pretty, pretty beneficial.